Come on. <laughs> so this Saturday, yes, it's Can against Brook. Kel Brook from the Manchester Arena. Gareth A. Davis, Andy Clark, and current WBA Continental Welterweight Champion Connor Ben will bring you all the build up and live commentary of the fight. Coverage starts Talksport from 7 30 with the main event. Can versus Brook set to start around 10 30, we believe. Talksport's fight night host, Adam Catterall, will also be part of our commentary team on Saturday. And please say he joins us now. Adam, a very good morning. Morning, Alan. How are you, mate? You well? I'm good. So long last, we're going to see it. We're going to see this grudge. They hate each other. Absolutely. Better late than never. I know that a lot of people will be listening to this this morning saying it's 10, past, 10 years past its sell-by date. But listen, seeing these guys yesterday at the Open Workout today, we've got the press conference. They're at each other. We've seen the build-up on the television and the radio throughout the course of the week. There's nothing better, as Kel kind of said there in that little intro, than two Brits who absolutely hate each other that are going to knock seven bells out of each other Saturday night. Why is that? Why, why, where does it go back to this hatred? It goes back right to the amateur days when they were young kids, and obviously amateur, uh, Amir was coming through um, um, on the way to the Olympics. They had a little bit of a sparring session back then. Amir says that he schools Kel. Kel says that he doesn't get schooled. And then obviously Amir goes off on this fantastic run where he's fighting the best of the best in the professional game. He gets that silver medal, obviously, in the Olympic Games pre that, becomes world champion, and Kel's kind of had to do it the hard way. And I think there is a little bit of animosity that Amir's had it a little bit easier because of the Olympic Games compared to Kel. And maybe there is, I know that it's a horror words to use but maybe there is a little bit of jealousy from the Sheffield man's side and therefore that's where the animosity came as Gareth said there in the intro it is kind of on Kel's side but now as it's got closer it seems to be a bit more 50-50 with the hatred well you're, you're the expert cats what would you say um who would you put your money on to win the fight oh look at you man I'm calling the fight Saturday night you're asking me to get off the fence right okay then here we go um, get off the fence cuts. I, I genuinely <laughs> think that with the way that these two men's careers have played out in, in more recent times Kel Brook's biggest opportunities are early a lot of people will go against what I'm saying there they think his opportunities are late but Ooh, I think it, I'd, I'd have gone the other way I'd yeah, have, yeah. I, a lot of people are saying that but I just think that just with the weight situation that he's had I think as the fight goes on he's, he's more likely to slow down and his opportunities are with the power. He's got the power. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you look at his knock knockout record, and as everybody knows, Amir sometimes can't take a shot. So I would say that Kel's opportunities are in the first four rounds. After that, I would favour Amir with just with those fast hands wow. to be able to take him out as he slows. But a lot of people are going against me. A lot of people think it's Amir really and, and, and Kel late. But I, I, think, I, I, I think it's the other way around. Um, Adam, tell me, you mentioned weight there and Kel yeah. Brook's weight. I believe there's a six-figure fine if either fighter comes in overweight. Is that the fear that they'll pay the fine and come in heavier? I hope not, because they've agreed a contracted weight of 149. It's not norm It's not at the normal welterweight limit of 147. They've allowed that extra two pounds because Kel, let's be straight, has struggled to get down to 147. So he's got 149. There is a rehydration clause as well, because as everybody knows, Kel does blow up big. I think the rehydration clause is at about 162 pounds. For every pound that he's over 149 on Friday, and I don't think he will be, because I spoke to him yesterday and his team is saying that he's in and around right now 153. So he's only got four pounds to go before Friday. Um, but if he does come over, Every pound is going to cost him a hundred grand. So you know what I mean. Oh, come in, come that's... in at one four nine and don't lose your doll. That's don't, what I'd say. Don't tell Jamie O'Hara that. Sitting in the sauna, put half a stone on. It's not so, worth it, is it? I think it's Adam. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's three years I think since Can fight. Is that right? And maybe a couple of years since since Kell Brook fight. So you would yeah. think with that sort of length, and then for me, Brook would be maybe the sharper, I suppose. But you maybe think maybe opposite what do you no, well no I, th I think you're right yeah I, th I do I do you know they've got both got a similar opponent there in that last two years they both fought Terence Crawford I mean after that Amir Khan went out to the Middle East and fought his mate Billy did for a few quid um, but they both come up against one of the pound for pound best on the planet so they've been through a training camp for one of the pound for pound best they both obviously come up short the interesting narrative in this fight is that Amir Khan has employed Terence Crawford as part of his corner so Crawford and his team have obviously prepared for Khan they've prepared for Brooks so they kind of know both fighter inside and out. Khan is now working with Terence Crawford's team in order to get ready for this particular fight. Maybe he thinks there's a little bit of insider knowledge there that he can help out. But you're right there. I mean, two years, for lads at this age, to be out of the ring for two to three years is a, mm. is a long time. There's a lot of rust there, you know. And, and when that bell goes, I think a lot of them are actually going to throw game plans out the window and they're going to fight on instinct. Cad, do you think if it's a, an outstanding fight, it could be one there to fight again? Well, yeah. In a year's time, do you know, carry on? 
listen, my, my attitude towards rematches is always down to the fans. If it's an absolute barnstormer of a mm. fight, the fans will claim for for another one. If someone gets mod out, no, we don't want to get it seen again. But if they give us 12 rounds of rock'em, sock'em, robots, yep. yeah, man, let's go again. I know that people might moan that it's not elite against elite, but it is a 50-50. I mean, look at us. We're debating it. Not, I, I'm sure that if we all had a little bit of a say of who we think is going to win the fight, two of us might say Brooke, two of us might say Khan, and that's the beauty yep. of a good fight, a 50-50 that everybody wants to see. Yeah. Adam, just a quick in up. Hopefully it's not a curveball. Uh, I spoke to Tyson Fury last week and he said that Dylan White hadn't signed a contract. If he doesn't yeah. sign a thing, it's a Saturday, then the fight's off. Surely he's got to sign it. Surely. <laughs> Yeah, man, he's just, I think he's just playing mind games. I think Dillian's kind of enjoying it. I'm, uh, I'm At the start of it, I was a little bit concerned about the silence because Dillian does like to say a few things, but I'm kind of enjoying the silence, you know, now that it's kind of bringing more intrigue to the fight. Tyson's giving it the big one on social media, which is brilliant to see as well. I fully anticipate him signing it, mate, because there's a career-high payday there. There's an opportunity to become the heavyweight champion of the world. 90,000 people, Wembley Stadium in April. Wow. Come on, By exactly. the way, he looks fantastic, Fury. He yeah. looked, I'm not kidding, he, he, he had sparkle in his eye and he, the way he moved and he just, he looked, he looked brilliant. He's Promise the best me. in the world, mate. He's the best in the world. So let's hope that fight gets on because there's another British grudge match that we all want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Adam, thank you. Don't forget, Can Brook live and exclusive on Talk Sport this Saturday night. Uh, Man City against Spurs at 5.30. Then we stay in uh, the city, of course, of Manchester to bring you a huge fight. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.